Alright, welcome back. Last time... Well, we didn't do that much in particular. Maybe just keep the country... Well, stabilize the country. Try to get corruption down somewhat. It's taking its time. Keep things stable. Get state reach up. And get the elites to start liking me again. So they can get Republican tradition up. Though there's only so much I'm willing to give them. Hmm. You know what, why not? Provide tax relief. I don't really need the money that much anyway. Right. Currently, I'm also saving up money. Specifically in order to try to get the urban amenities up. And, well, I'm probably not going to get it this session, but maybe next session. Assuming that my tax income remains relatively consistent at about... Well, my balance remains relatively consistent at about half a decade a year, a month. Not a year, a month. That would be about... Well, at the moment, about five ducats a year. And I need about 40 or so more ducats, 45, so... Yeah, not this session, maybe next session. And then when that's done, it'll be great. I can finally start expanding the industry again in order to get more population and money. Specifically more population so that I can get a larger army, well, actually sustain an army, with the money needed for that. Hmm. Someone just picked up the next new tech. Someone already picked up 24 as well. Chasing 1422, really. Who has so many admin points? Save them for ideas or something. I don't think noble loyalty is there. I wonder why noble loyalty always seems to glitch out a bit. Hmm. Mm, tax money's still coming in. I mean, corruption's going down, so the efficiency at which our tax is increasing. If only because less money is being uh, leaked away. But most of my money's coming from peasantry rents and land tax and state property. Most of my expenses is going to the grain door. Fine by me. That's an expense I'm willing to take. If it means better stability. Nice. Yeah, check if anything's expired. Oh, yes, it has! Let's see. Aristocratic faction again. Ooh, plus 15 gentry loyalty. That's going to be extremely useful. Oh, elections. Four, five, one, two, one, five, one, three, zero. I'm gonna get the one, three, zero, aren't I? Nope, four, five, one. Not the greatest, but still pretty good at around 60% of executive authority. At least it's I think it should be around. Yeah, 443. Mm hmm. Sinner. Ah, <laughs> Clergy won't like that. Not one bit. Hmm, perhaps I should reduce the expense of courts. Maybe start attacking autonomy from the gentry. Nah. Let's do this instead. Renovate the court. Gonna cost them 35 loyalty, but they were already at 70 anyway. Right, this should reduce their influence and make uh, state corruption a little bit easier to handle. Oh, and prestige is going to decay less, which is good so long as my prestige remains positive. Oh, 
Oh yeah, I could probably do... I've got enough points, don't I? This gun costs me around 750. Oh, really 770. I do want to make sure that I can get the half attacks though. Protecting press. Urban protection is basically plus 2% as well as not losing these whilst with kite. So. Right. I can read these as the game goes on. Symbolic paradigm. People don't like what they don't understand. Couching authority and scholarship in terms of a single religion gives both a common ground that the lay folk can relate to. Tolerance to the true faith plus one. Fervor by association. Devotion to the state and to its religion are interchangeable. Both reflect a virtuous character, though only one satisfies temporal applications. Minus 5% manpower training cost. Finally, the actually useful one. Moral authority. A state which sources its authority from a higher power is necessarily a greater authority in matters concerning such powers than any common man. As such, there is much less popular consternation over the morality of its actions, regardless of whether they appear to be in conflict with such. Yearly Republican tradition, plus 0.25. Now that's useful. That will help to get this high. Also, the whole moral authority thing, that was long talk for basically if the state can claim that it's moral, then the people will take it as moral, even if those actions don't appear to be moral. <laughs> so, yeah. Well, I guess someone died in office. <laughs> One three three four six two and four two two. Oh, obviously one of them is bad. Including the age. Four two two. Well, uh, that's okay, I guess. Four three three could be better. I do believe the power voids are going to increase somewhat though. So I think my corruption is going to go up a bit higher than it was previously. Oh, that's my thing. Okay. Regime. Plus, I've hit due stability, so that's nice. Although, I doubt my corruption is going to drop much further. 1450. Okay. So, I can detect the slight changes. I'm hoping to get this before 1449, though. Sadly, I may have to maintain a high stability in order to achieve that. So. And stab 2 is currently around the limit of what I can achieve while also maintaining uh, necessary things. Increasing loyalty everywhere is a good thing, after all. Okay, the fact that it's remaining consistently high is a good sign. The maintenance, I mean, it indicates that the crops are, well, the crop industry is still being maintained. Though it is dropping. I don't think my own property is dropping. Is that actually noble? Uh, I'm not sure. Right. I think this is a good point to start. Uh, yeah, it's close enough. <laughs> um, I want to have one in Diplotech that's got pretty close to the uh, limit for diplomatic power. I might do that a couple more times before actually getting commercialization. I've also um, put a halt to expanding the state for a while in order to improve my stability and maintain two stability. I will have to admit, my state corruption is starting to get a little wonky because I'm reaching the point where uh, executive authority is actually starting to have a major impact. I'm 
hoping I was hoping to get this to before 1450, but we're not even possible with the way things currently are. I don't think I can get it any better anyway. I need to keep a constant full grain provision up. Is there something that I... Okay, Peru attack from me. Nope, nothing expires. Unless something expires in a few days from now. But I doubt that. Yep, okay. First thing that expired would be the grain provision and the um, influential aristocrats at the, near the start of next year. So, as for things, well, we've gone ahead and removed court tiles entirely. So now the nobility no longer have a boosted influence, at least not base. So their influence is actually much lower than it previously was, with apparently I can maintain sub-50 levels easily. Which is good. This means I can start moving towards, um, for example, professionalizing the army, freeing the peasants, although I don't think I can manage all the way. Um... I wonder to do that. Okay, let's see. So I need 50 executive authority and less than 40 aristocratic influence for this. Same thing. For this, I'm going to need 65 executive authority and at least 30 bureaucratic influence. Then there will be a rural productivity boost and peasant freedom will constantly increase. But I can continue to do the, um, ignore the peasantry. <laughs> well, ignore peasantry problems. Uh, ignore tenant abuse. There we go. Ignore tenant abuse up until, well, we get free peasantry. Because I'm going to be at the minimum peasant freedom anyway, every time. After that, yearly peasant freedom will increase, which will, heck, even just increasing the minimum means that the mobility will gain less money, which will reduce the amount of money they get. So that will reduce power further, which will slightly reduce their money. Again, feedback loops, although a weak one. Lots of feedback loops, honestly. Most of them are positive, some of them negative. For example, the whole concept of there being a resting point for stuff like corruption, that's a negative feedback loop. Or even autonomy. That's why higher autonomy reduces the yeah, monthly autonomy change minus 0. 0.655, that's to allow for a resting point. That's a negative feedback loop. In fact, autonomy is going down consistently. The elites are slowly becoming happier, but more importantly, Republican tradition is starting to go up again. And more rapidly too, because I went ahead and grabbed the first three civic religion ideas. Um, although I can grab the fourth one right now, I don't plan on doing so. I'd like to... I'm not sure if I can even ensure if I can get Athens Tech 24. I'm not sure if I can get points together. Hmm. Because I want to avoid losing these buffs. Since those buffs really do help, especially with making money. My income is steadily increasing because I have been slowly obtaining more and more farmland property. In fact, my yearly revenue is... Well, after all the corruption loss, the tax farming loss, it's almost enough to sustain one uh, investment, one direct investment per year. I may end up doing fisheries soon, too, because they are a source of delicacies. Though I don't think they're quite as profitable as the farmland. Well, okay, they are more profitable. Still, I don't think anything. I don't think I could do anything more than one investment. Plus, I also have to watch out for uh, available labor. Though it was 1.2 before, so let's see. It's 0.73 available. Currently using up uh, 13 slots. Yeah, let's see. And it's currently 0.74. Okay, it should be perfectly fine to expand that. 
I guess I'm expanding the fisheries too. I just hope the uh, wage changes that end up occurring don't affect things too much. Plus, most of those fisheries will be under state property, I think. I, have an, I do have a high enough state reach for that to be probably the case. Plus, if there's overflow, um, excess investment money goes into buying up property from other factions. So, in fact, if I really wanted to, I could just constantly invest into the, the farmlands and just end up owning all the farmlands myself. In fact, I'm already now the largest shareholder, largest landowner, inside farmlands. Though not for resources in general, because fisheries are almost entirely peasant-owned. Districts are a different story. This is mainly burghers and clergy. And the most of the burghers happen to be... Well, practically all the burghers happen to be commercial. All of the academics are also <laughs> clergy, basically. So theoretically, residents should have some, too. Hmm. Although there is some inconsistency with how much is there and how much is owned. But yeah, there is definitely some inconsistency there. If you count up the number on the districts, the percentages, even if you include the potential for there to be rounding errors mixed in, the end result is about 95%, I think. Uh, let's see here. Maybe I should try actually counting this stuff. So that's a 20. The first two are approximately 20. 20.3 20 to be the precise, and then there's okay, so 62.7. Uh-huh, 62.7. 96, 97, and then, so 98.6. Even if all those numbers were truncated from, you know, point N9, it's still not enough to accommodate everything. But I think the resources might also be a bit off. So perhaps not. Okay, the fisheries are definitely off. I can say that's 96%. Easily. The farmland might not be. Hmm. At least the classes are investing into maintenance. Well. But yeah, state income is... My income's actually booming now. I guess all that investment paid off. I should be able to start setting up an actual military soon enough. I do have to be careful. The only potential, well, the only real potential target is... Uh... Yeah. Pretty inventive, because Denmark here has 9k troops. Oh, and they also have, as subjects, Sweden with 5k, Norway with 4k. So that's 18k troops. I think that's almost half my population, if not more than half. Oh, it's more than half my population. <laughs> yeah. Plus, they're no longer nearly as diplomatically isolated as they were before, so I probably would want 5k troops if I wanted to be, if I wanted to seriously try that. Well, assistance with Lubeck would also be nice. Probably should improve relations with um, Denmark again. Yeah. Right, I can select the province in order to check. Let's see, build infrastructure cost 156. Yeah, so I just need about 25, 27 ducats. Assuming costs remain the same, which probably isn't. There's also labor demand. Which can only be half supplied. Oh boy, that's going to spike the labor costs and make things weird. At least it should spark some immigration again.
Oh dear. It's good that their influence is gone. For example, I need to get rid of their autonomous holders. It would be nice if their gentry dues were, you know, were actually worth the effort to tax them not at the moment. But I can give them specifically uh, service exemptions. Strange, that's always bureaucracy corruption. Cost no points, and I'd rather not do any reforms than absolutely necessary until 3030 passes so that I can actually get the printing press. Plus, I need the admin points for other stuff. Continuity of mission would be really good because it would help me well, with stability. They even allow me to get to three. But yeah, I've gone on for long enough. It's good to see how much how things are improving a lot. That army. Okay. Hey, I have definitely gone on long enough. I'll see you again next time. Until then.